Hi, I'm Shannon Eller. We're on both sides of the couch. I'm here with one of my counselors, Annie Scourgea. Annie is um, a rising clinician. She is on track at the board, composite board. She's ready to become a licensed associate professional counselor. The first step in that process, uh, you've been approved by the board to be, to be licensed. You're ready to test. And ready to test. Ready to test. Uh, that is an important part. Annie was not an intern here as the interns you've seen. She interned elsewhere but came here for that part of the process. I think if you're coming from a position as a clinician and realizing that you have graduate school, then you have practical and internship, then you have to come somewhere and work while you're trying, while you're waiting the process out for the board for permission to test, testing and being approved, becoming a licensed associate level counselor, whether it's professional counselor or marriage and family therapist, moving toward becoming fully licensed. And each one of our people are on different professional journeys. Mm -hmm. Tell the people a little bit about yourself and who you see and kind of what client population you're attached to. So I am um, on track to becoming an LAMFT, which is a marriage and family therapist. I currently see um, anywhere between ages of three, four, all the way up to um, the elderly population. Um, for all kind of different presenting problems like anxiety, depression, um, behavioral problems, all sorts of things. And one of your approaches I think that you're really super strong at is the cognitive behavioral approach. Yes. With adults it would be strictly CBT. With children it's more from a cognitive behavioral play therapy mm -hmm. with children and adolescents approach. So when we're looking at cognitive behavioral therapy, uh, I think of CBT as being extremely foundational, that anything we do is leading to changing negative cognitions or thoughts, problematic or impulsive behaviors, and, and mood. You know, we don't want our clients to be over the top with anger or anxiety. We don't want them to be uh, so depressed and sad that they can't be up and running. So trying to do that, the, some of the CBT techniques, if you're a counselor and you're interested in learning a little bit different approach to just CBT, kind of a cookie cutter CBT approach and incorporating some family and play therapy interventions into CBT, this particular workshop would be super good for you because we want to challenge negative cognitions, negative thought mm -hmm. patterns, kind of difficult to do with small children. We also want to do behavioral modification, which is much easier to do. But when you're pulling it in with family systems, and we're working with the whole family, you can't just understand that you're changing one person. If anyone or anything you change in a family is a system, the entire system mm -hmm. begins to change. Has that been your experience? Would you like to speak to that? Yeah. Um, so oftentimes when kids come in, they can't voice their thoughts the way adults can. So we and certainly not for 45 minutes. Yes. Right. Yeah, and so we use different techniques. Um, and so part of what we deal with is the kids are young. They haven't had a whole lifetime event. A lot of times it's things that have been happening in the family. And things that ha that are structured for them by the adults in their yeah. home. Right. Yeah. Um, so we'll talk about the, um, the way that it is structured, talking with the parents, um, kind of assessing the environment they're in, looking at kind of the things that affect the the child like the environment and the, the structure of the household the uh, rewards discipline things like that and this has proven to be one of your strengths mm -hmm. so if you're a counselor and you're interested in, in a different approach to CBT we're gonna have some articles on board for you we have cognitive behavioral play therapy we're also gonna have some interventions uh, there's a research I'm sorry a resource self-esteem building uh, and conflict solving activities for kids four to eight we're gonna have some things around Erickson's stage because it's important that families that are being truncated because of trauma or other kinds of grief issues or just life cycle events, we want to help them catch up and, and meet the tasks that are developmentally appropriate. We've also got some interventions. Uh, one of the interventions is the rainbow path and how to take cognitions and emotions and challenge them the same emotion that has a downside or backside can be turned around and have a positive side. We teach some of the kids that come through here to think of their emotional clock as like the um, oven gauge. If 350 is where we're, we're cooking and we're kind of coming toasty and really everything's cooking well, down at 150, that's like depression and sadness. We're way too low. We've got to turn our clock up some, our timer up. 500 broil. They're over the top. They're over the top with fear, anxiety, with anger. Gotta dial it back. 
So those are some of the things. We try to use metaphors and representatives and graphics to help make it real to children that are too small to understand. The um, constructs that are not developmentally, developmentally appropriate to them. Things that are not tangible to them. So we try to make it concrete and meet them, every client where they're at. If you're a counselor and you want help, 770-468-7424. If you're a client, this sounds like something that you would be interested in, or you've got a doctor or a social worker tell you that CBT therapy is what's best for your child, this is the place to go. Ask for Annie. Okay, thank you. Shane and Elle are both sides of the couch. We want to take a minute while Annie's here with us and talk about an exciting new um, opportunity that we have. Many of you may know that the state law has changed to allow counselors to do certain levels of assessment. Our particular practice, and for me, myself, we're cleared to do assessments at level A, level S, and level B. Level B is exactly who we are, counselors with a graduate degree in marriage and family and licensed professional counseling. We're not doing psychological evaluations that are at level C for psychiatrists and for psychologists for personality disorders or competency to stand trial or um, neurobiological traumatic brain injury. That's not, our, that's not in our lane at all. We're firmly in our wheelhouse with clinical disorders and we're doing those assessments. We've had a great deal of support from the Civitan Club as well as from the Georgia State Bar Association, from the judges and lawyers in our county and in our surrounding counties to allow us funding to purchase these assessments. And Annie's been working on several things. So why don't you tell the folks what you're working on? Yeah, so I'm working on compiling all the assessments to get a good list of them so that we can get them ready to begin assessing um, the clients that come in um, that might be ordered to or that want to come in to see us for the first time. Um, so we'll have things that might test for like depression, anxiety, um, parenting, and parenting, parental involvement, family functioning, um, couple f conflict, mm -hmm. as well as other kinds of things like processing, things mm -hmm. that we're asking, being asked by the schools. We'll have abilities to try to help the schools understand where some of these kids are at, help the families understand, and then come together. So we have some assessments that are for, that are available without fee to the input to the clinical public. We also have assessments that we've had to purchase from Pearson and Parr. And what one of the things you're doing, I think, is you're trying to get an assessment testing battery mm -hmm. for different things for academic, intellectual, cognitive, vocational. Uh, family relational and then bilingual where possible so right Spanish. yes and we're very interested in having some of these things translated if you're look viewing this blog and you are interested in helping us translate any of our assessments into uh, Spanish or our intake packet we would be very interested in talking with you but we're also kind of a pioneering practice in that we do publishing but we're also now doing this assessment and instead of styling ours as a psychological evaluation we're going to style it as a comprehensive clinical assessment battery because that's what it's going to be exactly that's exactly where we live so uh, I know that you're working on getting kind of a super bill mm -hmm. for that as well as an test, assessment test battery and then also a scoring sheet mm -hmm. so once we do the testing then we know kind of what it means uh, where, where the subscales what they're indicating and how to best write that up for the attorneys, for defects, for court, for families, and um, for the schools. So that's an exciting new thing that we're working on. And we appreciate very much that, because I know you're working at night on the weekend and bringing your particular skill set to this. So for that, you have our gratitude. Uh, check us out. We're, this is a project in infancy, but it's going to go through the stages of life very rapidly. So it's going to move to middle childhood, adolescence, and adult at warp speed. Mm -hmm. Raise up your project. All right, <laughs> thank you guys.